With the release of Deadpool and Wolverine, we finally get to see Wolverine in the classic yellow and blue costume, which means it's time to rank all of Wolverine's live action suits from my least favourite to my favourite. Hello and welcome to Cinemates, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this. Also, there will be spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine, so if you haven't seen it yet, you've been warned. As always, with my rankings, I need to set out the criteria for what I'm going to include in this ranking. And it's a bit weird with Wolverine, because he hasn't really had many traditional superhero suits. Not in the same way as when I rank Spider-Man or Batman, because for 24 years it's felt like they've been embarrassed by his comic book look. And so instead of limiting this to just superhero suits, which would be a very short list, I'm going to include his major costume. So this won't be every outfit he's ever worn that includes the main looks he's had in each film, suits used in action sequences, or any look that seems to reference the comic. And he has to have been wearing it. So sorry to the deleted scene from The Wolverine because that suit looks good but we never got to see him in it so it doesn't count. But you get a special mention here. Also I'm only looking at live action theatrical film suits so nothing from animation or fan films or comics. And of course this is my opinion on the suits considering their design, their comic connections, their relevance to the story, if they're practical and it is not my opinion on the films just their suits. So with that out of the way let's get right into the ranking. Number 14 the X-Men 1 leather suit. Coming in last place is the first ever superhero suit suit we see Wolverine in, and that's the suit from X-Men 1. This film was clearly reluctant to go full comic booky, and I understand why. The world they were setting up in X-1 was more realistic and grounded, with a focus on what if mutants really existed and their persecution in society, rather than focusing on comic book stuff. But this suit just doesn't feel like the way to go. Sure, this is the era where black leather was cool, but this design just isn't. It looks awkward, it looks uncomfortable, it looks restrictive. So while I understand that they wanted to shy away from comic book bright designs, the design they did go with just looks worse. And so it leaves us in a weird place where it feels like they thought comic suits wouldn't work, but they do a half-hearted attempt to adapt it and they end up creating something that works even less. Since these suits in film, we began to see some leather in the comics like with Ultimate X-Men and Grant Morrison's new X-Men, both in 2001, but these were influenced or told to tie into the film suits rather than the films being influenced by the comics. There are a few nice things on here. Each X-Man gets a different colour piping to reference their comic book suits and Wolverine gets one of the more obvious choices with the yellow like his comic look. And the shape of the piping does reference his comic book suit with the triangular shapes on the side. But ultimately, I just don't think the suit works and I understand that it was a different time, but surely even at the time, this looked bad. Number 13, Old Man Logan. This is a look that we see during Deadpool and Wolverine while Deadpool searches for a Wolverine to work with and this one was Old Man Logan. I think this is the least exciting of the alternate versions because we've already kind of seen this look of an older grey Wolverine in Logan. Sure, it was fun to get a more direct reference to the comics. He's got the hat and it feels more western, but we don't really really get a good look at this one and it's just the least interesting. It's fun but nothing special. Number 12, Age of Apocalypse Wolverine. Next up we have the Age of Apocalypse Wolverine that we also briefly see in Deadpool and Wolverine. Wolverine goes by the name Weapon X from an alternate future where he lost his hand to Cyclops and he has it replaced with a stump. Now I'm super happy that we got to see this look on the big screen because there's no way we'd ever get a film with this look properly. So it's a great reference but ultimately it's an absolutely insane design that just doesn't really look cool to me. It's purposely emphasized to be over the top and so they adapt it well. I do wish we got to see the claws come out of the stump, but in the film it's just used as a stump. If you grew up reading this era of comics, then this look might mean more to you. But to me, it's always been a crazy look that I'm glad they referenced, but it doesn't really look that cool. Number 11, the X-Men 2 and 3 leather suit. Now we have the leather suits worn by Wolverine in X2 and X-Men 3 The Last Stand. I think these are slight improvements from the suit worn in X1. This time the leather looks less thick, it has less padding, and so ultimately looks less awkward, restrictive, and uncomfortable. The biggest difference this time around is the large X in the middle of the chest which wasn't there in X1. This helps to make it feel more like a comic book suit and more of a team uniform instead of some weird biker gang. This was potentially influenced by the Grant Morrison new X-Men comics which launched a few years before X2 which had the big yellow X's. So there is more of a comic connection with those suits. I do wish X-Men 3 didn't use the same suits again. I think it works better in X2 but I wish X3 continued to develop these suits into something more comic booky. That way we could have seen a gradual evolution of the suits becoming more comic booky as as time went on as the X-Men in the world became more established. And X3 definitely has the least grounded tone and so I think it could have got away with adding maybe a bit more colour or comic influences into the suit in that third film. Overall they still have the same issues as the X-Men 1 suit but with a few minor improvements that bump it up the list. Number 10 the white tank top. The white tank top is one of the most iconic looks for Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and again it didn't really have a history of wearing this in the comics before the films but after the films we began to see this look make its way into the comics. The look became 
iconic from a great scene in X2. And then the white tank kept sticking around, appearing in X3, Origins, The Wolverine, Logan, and even variants in Deadpool 3. When I go to a superhero film, I want to see costumes, comic accurate looks, which is why this is low down my list. It's just not visually interesting. That said, it looks way more comfortable and less awkward than full black leather outfit. And it makes more sense for this character to be wearing, especially when fighting. Plus, tank tops are super hard to pull off and no one wears them better than Hugh Jackman. And there's no denying that this has become an iconic look for Logan. Number nine, the leather jacket. Another iconic look for Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is his leather jacket. And we first see this in X-Men 1 and it continues through to multiple films. If Wolverine is going to be wearing leather, I think the classic jacket looks a lot better than the full leather suit. And it just seems cooler and less dated. Sure, I don't need to see the jacket's origin in X-Men Origins Wolverine, but we did see Wolverine wearing brown leather jackets all across the comics and animated series before the film. So this one actually has root in the source material. And we do get a few yellow stripes on the side referencing his comic costume, which is a nice touch. Number eight, Patch. This is another variant we see in Deadpool and Wolverine, and this one comes as Patch, Wolverine's undercover alter ego in Madripoor, donning a white suit and eye patch, which is just undeniably a cool look that they brought to life perfectly. And Jackman looked great in that costume. This is a variant that I wish we got to see more of. I understand these variants were quick, fun gags, but I'd want to see more of this one. I want to see Jackman undercover finding out information, gambling with Joe Fixit, and getting blood all over that white suit. I just think this is a cool look, and unlike the other variants lower on this list, I think this one could have worked more than just a fun gimmick. Number seven, the Days of Future Past 70s outfit. Now, this is the look that Logan wears in Days of Future Past while in the 70s. And on the surface, it's just another leather jacket look. But I think this one deserves its own ranking. It's paired with a funky shirt, belt, and jeans that fit into the 70s setting. And overall, it looks cool. It's not a look that works for fighting, but that's fine because Wolverine doesn't do much fighting in this film. He plays more of a mentor role and the look works for that. The brown leather jacket references his look in the Days of Future Past comics too. Now, I think one thing I haven't talked about much so far is Wolverine's hair. Now, Wolverine famously has this unique pointy hairstyle and across the movies, this varies from cartoonishly big to way too short or just completely different. I think the look we get in Days of Future Past plus the beard is the perfect level of looking like the comics but not too over the top and still managing to look cool. I think the Days of Future Past in the 70s is the peak look for Logan in civilian clothes. Number six, the Wolverine black funeral suit. This is probably the most underrated look on this list and this is in the Wolverine during the funeral when Wolverine wears an all black suit in Japan. And it just looks awesome. If Wolverine is going to be wearing all black, this just looks infinitely cooler than a stiff all leather outfit. Wolverine's in Japan, he's fighting ninjas. You can't dress Logan up like a ninja, so you stick him in an all black suit. It just looks awesome. It gives John Wick vibes, but Logan fought ninjas in Japan years before John Wick ever did. Overall, I think this black suit is just cold. Number five, Weapon X. This is Wolverine's cameo in X-Men Apocalypse, where he escapes the Weapon X facility. Did Logan need to be in this film? No. Is it an awesome, extremely comic accurate look that helps to adapt Weapon X more accurately than Wolverine Origins? Yes. Overall, just a cool, comic accurate look that was nice to see put on screen. Number four, Logan. Next up, we have Logan's look in the film, Logan. And this one's a bit of a cheat because he has multiple looks throughout that film. But I'm grouping them all together here because they all represent the look of an older Logan and they reference some of his previous looks throughout his cinematic history. Now, all of these looks have the gray hair and the beard, which Jackman pulls off really well. And of course, it represents the older aged Logan while also referencing his old man Logan look from the comics. We see him get to rock the full beard and the more traditional mutton chop by the end of the film. One of the most famous looks from this film is of course the suit he wears as a limo driver. It represents Logan trying to live more normally, working a job with a full beard helping him to hide, but trouble always finds him and drags him back in. It's always fun to see Wolverine kick butt in a suit and potentially references his previous Japan look. And I think this is the coolest look in Logan. But we also see him in a brown jacket referencing his old man Logan comics look and the history of wearing brown jackets in these films. We see him in an overshirt like we've seen in the past. And of course he ends up in the classic white tank top. I like that the film uses his different looks to reference Hugh Jackman's version of Logan's history while honoring the old man Logan comics too. Number three, the days of future past future look. Kicking off the top three, it's a suit we see in the alternative post-apocalyptic future at the start of days of future past. And I think this was Wolverine's best superhero suit before we got Deadpool and Wolverine. It has a more armored look, but despite that, it feels more slim and flexible than his stiff leather outfit. Despite being in a darker future, the suit gives us the most color with not only the yellow, but also some blue in there like the comic. It doesn't look restrictive or awkward. It feels like something that makes sense for this character to wear. And I think 
the more tactical look works a lot better than the leather suit. We also get to see the grey streak in his hair like we see in the Days of Future Past comics. Now I do feel like this suit would have worked with the mask. I understand them not giving him the mask but I think this could have worked here. Now in an alternate future, living on the run, hiding from the Sentinels, it would make sense for Wolverine to wear a mask to help with his cover. It's a more comic booky suit, it's more armoured and it's more stealthy. I think if the Fox universe were to ever give us the Wolverine mask it should have been here. And when you see fan edits of this suit with the mask I think it could have worked. Now it's still not completely comic accurate but it feels less embarrassed by the comic look and colours and that allows Wolverine to have a suit that feels less awkward and restrictive. It's a shame we don't see much of this suit, there's no real big action scenes or anything because I'd have liked to have seen more of this and it's a shame that they only started to find cool ways to adapt Wolverine's costume near the end of his time in the Fox universe. But that leads us on to some of his best suits now that he's made his way to Marvel Studios. Number two, the John Byrne brown and tan suit. And number two, we have the suit worn by a variant of Wolverine used to fight the Hulk in Deadpool and Wolverine. And it looks fantastic. For some fans, the yellow and brown is even more of an iconic look for Wolverine than the blue and yellow. And it's so great that we got to see Hugh Jackman in these colors. The strength of this design in live action comes down to the strength of this design in the comic. It's a very simplistic yet effective design and it translates really well to live action. The MCU didn't over design it, they kept it simple and it works so well because of that. And it's a shame we didn't get to see this in the Fox world because I think this would have fit into those original films because the colors and the design, they're not too over the top and I think it would have fit the more realistic world. And it looks leagues better than black leather and actually more of a realistic outfit. Like compare these two looks, they really thought the yellow outfit was the one that looked less realistic. When I think of Wolverine fighting the Hulk, this isn't necessarily the suit I think of. I more think of his original appearance look or even his ultimate look, but this is a suit that he did use to fight the Hulk in the comics. And they even do a great reference to that iconic cover with the Hulk reflected in his claws. Man, I wish we got to see that fight properly. Some people will have this as their favorite suit in live action. And I do get it. This is a fantastic look, but we don't get to see it with the mask. I wish we did. I understand they wanted to save the mask for the final fight, but man, this suit would have looked cool with the mask. We even have official concept art for this. Either way, this suit looks damn good and if Jackman returns in future films, put him in this suit with the mask. Number one, the blue and yellow X-Men suit. Of course, the suit we get in the number one spot is the main yellow and blue suit from Deadpool and Wolverine. This suit is fantastic. We waited 24 years to see Hugh Jackman in this suit and it was worth it. The suit proves the fans were right. This looks good. Don't be embarrassed by the comic designs because they do actually work. The suit looks great. It looks realistic. It doesn't look too over designed. Sure, there's a few unnecessary lines here or there and I wish the classic Wolverine triangles on the side were more obvious, but overall they nailed the look of this suit in live action. What's great about it is that we get multiple different looks of it. We get fully sleeved, no sleeves, no sleeves and mask and even mask and no shirt which actually has been in the comics. So we got to see different comic looks of Wolverine just from this one suit. Now let's talk about the mask. I'm so glad they included it and the moment he puts it on is such an effective moment. For the most part I think the mask looks good. There's certainly some shots and some angles where it looks weird but overall I'm glad they went for it and they even gave him the white eyes. Now it's just down to you DCU Batman. I think at times it's CGI and that's when it looks a bit weird and in the theatre I couldn't tell if it was all CGI but we have seen proof that there was a practical mask worn on set. I just don't get why it looks weird at certain moments like the official version of this suit and mask worn at Disneyland looks fantastic. So why does it vary so much in the final film? Ultimately I think it shows the mask can work in live action because for years people said it couldn't be done and they were so close to getting it perfect on the first try and I even felt like Jackman felt more like Wolverine with that mask on. Even his voice felt more like Wolverine. Jackman was totally totally transported into the character when he put that cowl on. There was also a lot of talk coming into this film that his arms were CGI too, but again, we've seen photos showing Jackman really did have his arms out and he's always in such phenomenal shape. I do wish, however, that we got to see the sleeveless look, keeping the shoulder pads to really complete the iconic comic look. However, what really cements this suit into the top spot is the story behind it, because this suit is actually important to the version of Logan in the film. He wears the suit to honor his X-Men that he feels like he's failed. And so when he finishes his arc by the end of the film, he's ready to mask up and become the X-Man he always could have been. And it's such a smart way to tie this costume that fans have wanted to see for over 20 years directly into the story, meaning that there's a connection for both the audience and the characters into the suit and it makes it even more satisfying when he fully masks up. Overall just the look of this suit with the mask would be enough to get it to my top spot but the heart and the story reason is just the cherry on top which really cements this suit into my top spot and the yellow and blue Wolverine suit from Deadpool and Wolverine easily comes in at number one. 
I hope you enjoyed my ranking. Let me know your rankings down below in the comments. Do you agree? What's your favorite? If you like this, I've also ranked the Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Batman suits. So check those out if you haven't already. Let me know any other superhero suits you want me to rank down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please give the video a like. It helps my channel out so much. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this on DC, Marvel, Star Wars, or anything else amazing going on in cinema right now. But for now, thanks for watching Cinemaze.